everybody. Well, I guess you can see I'm standing in the middle of a wheat field. I wanted to show you something about the wheat and the tares and the difference between the two and what we've always been taught. Now, we've always been taught that you can't tell the difference between the wheat and the tares. Let me find a tear here. Here's a tear. Do they look similar? No. Now, maybe in the beginning, when the when the wheat first starts to pop out of the ground, you might be able, not be able to tell the difference between the wheat and the tear. But as they grow and as they start to bear fruit, they look a lot different than the tear. Something else you might notice about this wheat, this is West Virginia winter wheat, and as it grows, the wheat kernels become heavy and it causes the stalk to bend, to bow. Now, as we think about Matthew chapter 13, verse 24, when when uh, Yeshua is talking about the wheat and the tares, this kind of gives new meaning. You know, I've always been taught that you can't tell the difference between the wheat and the tares. Don't even try to uproot them because you're going to pull up uh, some of the wheat as, you, as, well as, you, as well as the tares. I think when you look at this a little bit closer, you'll find out that they could always tell the difference between the wheat and the tear, but they didn't pull them up because the tare's roots may be entangled in the wheat. And when you pull up the tear, you're also going to pull up the wheat. So what does uh, Jesus, Yeshua, tell us to do? He says to wait until the time of the harvest, and then the reapers will pull up the tares and bind them and throw them into the fire, and then the wheat will be uh, harvested. Also, something I've noticed uh, while I was out here looking at the wheat and the tares, some of the wheat, you notice out through here, is a lot taller than the other wheat. Some of it is bearing fruit faster than some of the other. Just words to think about. 